fake news is everywhere and it's getting harder and harder even for us scientists to spot them right on. But is there any way to fight this newborn digital pandemic? We can all agree that communicating science in easy and digestible way should be the top priority of our society. But sometimes that means simplifying really complex scientific findings that could willingly or unwillingly lead to completely fake scientific news that can lead to TikToks like this. It's a remix and I'm coming with that bow 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 Pretty bitch I'm trying to hit her with that bow 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 Can't catch me slipping I'm a up it when I bow 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 And bitches dance I throw them bands and make them dance Yeah, no, uh, consuming straight up coffee mixed with a little bit of lemon juice and uh, sprinkled hot water on the top will not make your belly fat go away. But what might make it go away is consuming less calories than you burn throughout the day. But how do you know that I was right? Right there when I said that scientific fact. How to distinguish when we're bombarded every day with a lot of scientific facts and new findings? There are a couple of tricks that might help you make a difference between science and pure myth. Hi, my name is Vladislav Radek, I'm writer and mathematician and this is Fabric of Life, a show where we try to fuse art and science to combine and to answer the most difficult questions. And the question that we want to answer today is how to spot fake scientific findings or news or facts. Let me take you on an adventure. Imposters and charlatans are taking advantage of the complexity of the science. Some Instagram influencers cannot tell the good signs from bad signs, and some politicians might use straight up fake scientific news to support their positions. But this is what you need to do to catch them red handed. Scientists rely on scientific journal papers to share their results. They want to share with the world which research has been done and how. Once researchers are confident of their results, they write up a manuscript and they send it to a journal. Editors forward the submitted manuscripts to at least two external referees who have the expertise in the topic. Those reviewers can suggest that the manuscript can be rejected, published or sent back to scientists for more experiments. That process is called peer review. Research published in peer-reviewed journals has undergone rigorous quality control by experts. Each year about 2,800 peer-reviewed journals publish roughly 1.8 million scientific papers. The body of scientific knowledge is constantly evolving and updating, but you can trust the science those journals publish. Peer review takes months and sometimes scientists can share preprints in order to get the word out. But if scientific evidence is not peer-reviewed, you can forget about it until other scientists from the same field give it the stamp of approval. You should be also very careful of predatory journals. They are not peer-reviewed manuscripts and they often ask uh, authors and scientists to pay a hefty fee in order to be published in them. There are thousands of thousands of them and I would be really skeptical if I read some scientific findings published there. We can all be victims of our own biases. Sometimes we read something shocking and bombastic and our natural inclination is to believe it's true. From life on Mars to eating chocolate every day to support our health, we just want something to be true so we can share it with our friends and discuss it later. The salience bias is tendency to overestimate the likelihood of vivid occurrences. It leads people to mistakenly believe overhyped findings and trust confident politicians in place of cautious scientists. A confirmation bias can be a work as well. People tend to give credence to news that fits their existing beliefs. This tendency helps climate change denialists and anti-vaccine advocates believe in their causes despite the scientific consensus against them. A lot of online publications know how to use those biases against you. Remember, their only goal is to keep you scrolling for hours so they can serve you with more ads. Just because you can see a relationship between two things doesn't necessarily mean that one causes the other. 
Even if surveys find that people who live longer drink more red wine, that doesn't mean a daily glug will extend your lifespan. It could just be that red wine drinkers are wealthier and have better health care. There are many bogus nutritional claims out there. Here is a simple example I always give to my students. Looking at this graph of data collected representing ice cream sales and monthly shark attacks around United States each year, we would find that two variables are highly correlated. One might claim that eating ice cream might likely get you killed by a shark. But is that really true? Not quite. The more likely explanation is that more people consume ice cream and get in the ocean when it's warmer outside, which explains why those two variables are so highly correlated. Although ice cream sales and shark attacks are highly correlated, one does not cause another. So you can finally relax eating your ice cream and not worrying that one shark might see you as an ice cream. If the study used human subjects, check to see whether it was placebo controlled. That means some participants are randomly assigned to get the treatment like new vaccine and others get a fake version that they believe is real. The placebo. That way researchers can tell whether any effect they see is from the drug being tested. The best trials are also double blind. To remove any bias or preconceived ideas, neither the researchers nor volunteers know who is getting the active medication or the placebo. The size of the trial is important too. If the study included a couple dozen of people and shows promising results, scientists might be on the right track. But not that you can immediately benefit from the treatment. Clinical trials have thousands of subjects, but some clinical research use much less subjects than that. Researchers need to make sure that they explain how they achieved statistical confidence. And don't forget, science simply does not work like politics. There is no debating and there is no yes, but maybe you should listen to the other side. If you're not completely confident in some scientific finding, there's only one way to overturn it. First, you need to finish bachelor's degree. Then you need to finish master's degree and take a PhD in underlying field. Then you need to uh, write a study that uh, disproves uh, the study that you want to uh, dismantle. And then you need to wait for council of experts to confirm your opposing findings. It's pretty simple, isn't it? In the end, don't forget that we live in the era of sensationalism, media attention and ad selling. Not every media wants to be accurate, some of them just want to grab your attention. Some of the doctors on the TV are not real doctors, others are paid or have a stake in companies whose products they promote. Beware of medical products and procedures that sound too good to be true. Be skeptical of testimonials. Think about key players' motivations and who will be paid. If you're still suspicious of something in the media, there is only one way to find out if it's true. Type the finding in Google Scholar, see if you can find the journal article, see if a reputable journal published it and see how many citations it has. If that is still not enough and you can still not tell the difference between real and myth, maybe you should ask professionals to help you. It's interesting how we live nowadays in society that when our car breaks, we immediately go to car mechanic in order to fix it. But when we have some health problems, we jump to internet instead of trusting our doctors. Science is the way of thinking much more than its old body of knowledge. And it's the main reason that you and me are alive and enjoying this conversation. We should just be really careful how we communicate it. And when we're on topic of communication, I have one more great adventure for you. I tried to scientifically prove the fact that one big German city simply does not exist, although all maps and train tickets say so. And why is that? Well, you need to click on the link down below and I'm going to take you another adventure for German city that really does not exist. Until then, stay tuned and curious and don't forget, libraries still exist. Right now I'm on a train in Germany that should have its last stop in the city, that it's not really there. 
I'm on my quest to prove one of the best hidden conspiracy theories in the whole world. One whole city that appears on the maps, train tickets and even postcards. It's not really there. And this conspiracy starts to get outlines of reality because this train is slowly getting empty and a couple of passengers that are actually here are probably paid actors. 